boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and this is the review of Prime Video's rated R superhero television show, The Boys, season four, episode one, two, and three, which dropped for our viewing pleasure just, just past Thursday, June the 13th. This is a show that I have loved from beginning to end, all the way but going back to the first season, first episode. Every episode, it, it's just perfection in my humble opinion. I love this show. I never read the uh, boys comic book, which this show is based on, of course, but I know a little bit about a little bit. I wasn't, <laughs> you know, I'm not a, a, a aficionado on this source material to whereas I can pick apart certain things. Oh, that's not like the book. Oh, that's not the, how the story goes and so on and so forth. Uh, that's, that's not my thing. I am going into this like a lot of people going into this with fresh eyes. And I love it that way. Sometimes I wish it was that way when it comes to certain comic books that I've read growing up, you know, the, the mainstream ones, uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, you know, all that good stuff uh, from Marvel and DC. But unfortunately, that's how I have to approach it. Now, with this material going into it fresh, just like another Prime Video uh, property, uh, Invincible, I go into that not knowing much about the source material. And so it's it feels good. It actually feels good going into it blind. And I enjoy it more. And I've enjoyed this show for three consecutive seasons. And so now we arrive to season four. And all bets are off. I really thought that after season three, what more can we tell? What more story can we tell after that season ended? You know what I'm saying? It, 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 the creators of this show initially just pitched three seasons or possibly two. I can't remember, but I know they're going beyond what they initially <laughs> planned to do because of the show's popularity and how it is widely received. So they, they, they're keeping him pushing. Now, uh, spoiler, we're going to, uh, they greenlit a uh, fifth season, and that is the final season. They already said that season five will be the last season of The Boys, and I, I think that's smart. You know, just going three episodes deep into season four, I feel that's a smart idea. Reason being, not because it's bad, because I'm enjoying these first three episodes thus far of uh, season four, uh, is that's a good reason why to leave for the simple fact you want to leave people happy. You don't want to overstay your welcome. I'll use the example of The Handmaid's Tale. I enjoy The Handmaid's Tale, uh, that show that's on Hulu uh, starring Elizabeth Moss. Love that show for the first two seasons. But after that, it, it just went into territory that I was like, why are we still doing <laughs> Why are we still doing this? It's not even Handmaid's Tale anymore. They overstayed their welcome. And so you don't want a show to jump the shark, you know, that old television uh, 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 moniker that they put on shows that just go past their peak, so to speak. And so before we get into the first three episodes recap and review, let's recap what took place in uh, season three because I had to be reminded it's been so long. <laughs> It feels like it's been, ah, geez, two, three years, maybe. And it could have been. I, I didn't check the date on it, but it feels like it's been forever since season three ended. And quite honestly, I forgot a lot. <laughs> I, I did. I forgot a lot. Uh, but season three, uh, it took place a year after season two events, you know, of the boys. And we find the boys seeking help from Soldier Boy, who was this, I guess you could say, deranged Captain America, if you will. <laughs> and they wanted his help to take down Homelander, who we later found out in the, uh, during the season that he is actually, 
he being Soldier Boy, is Homelander's father. And so uh, Homelander, he reaches his breaking point after Soldier Boy disavows him as his son. And we see that Huey and Butcher, they're getting high off of this uh, uh, deadly, uh, what, it, what was it, what is it called? Uh, v compound. And uh, Huey is taking it because he feels intimidated by uh, Starlight's power. You know, it's because they're dating and she's more powerful than him. You know, that macho stuff, you know, we can't have the woman being more powerful than us, you know. <laughs> so he had, he's taking it for that. Butcher is taking it because he wants to be powerful enough to destroy Homelander. And we find Homelander, he, he's just lost it. He was already, I mean, deranged from jump, but he has completely lost it. And his supporters... Have, they completely love it in return. You know, Butcher, he's dying now because of him taking so much of this Compound V. Uh, Starlight is now one of the boys. She has left Vault. She's one of the boys now helping them. Uh, Victoria Newman is actually the adopted daughter of Stan Eggert, and she's now a vice president candidate. You have uh, Stan Eggert. He wants to legalize that that V compound, that tempor uh, temporary uh, compound. Uh, it, 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 a lot takes place, but not to mention that Victoria is also a soup. You know, she's been hiding the fact that she's a soup. And so uh, you had all that going on. You had the deaths that took place in season three. Black Noir is dead. You know, <laughs> Homelander kills him. Stormfront, the love of Homelander's life, dies in season three. Uh, Supersonic dies. Well, Homelander just completely demolishes him. <laughs> uh, Queen Maud, uh, she isn't dead, but she's gone. You know, after the fight with Homelander, and Homelander ended up I think, taking her eye out and everything. It, it was brutal, uh, but she's off with her girlfriend uh she's left so I, I expect her to come back i don't know if it'll be this season but i do expect her to pop up soon or eventually uh, but uh yeah th we left off finding out that butcher is dying he only has a few months maybe a year to live homelander murders a supporter at this rally just laser beams his head <laughs> completely off and uh, instead of there being an uproar, people cheering him on, you know, and uh, that's how we end. That's how we end uh, season three. And so we get into season four here. And in case you don't know what the boys is by now, even though we're eight minutes in here, uh, the boys is a satirical superhero television show. And uh, it stars Carl Urban, Jack Quaid, Anthony Starr. Aaron Moriarty, Jesse T. Usher, Chance Carford, uh, uh, Laz Lorenzo, and many, many more. This show follows a team of vigilantes as they combat superpowered individuals who abuse their powers. Season four uh, is picking up where we left off from season three. I must say this. Uh, the subtlety is gone in this. <laughs> there's the subtlety is gone in the previous four seasons or the previous three seasons. I should say it was very subtle on the commentary on this show, you know, depicting America and the media and the politics of this country and everything surrounding it. It was very, very subtle. Not these, these first three episodes, of season four, they just said, forget it. They We're going, <laughs> we just going to show it and put it out there for you. And this is what it is. Let's just say that we're getting a different approach to the storytelling in this season. Uh, a little different from what we got in the previous three seasons, which were excellent. And this is excellent as well. Just told differently. We start off here with our two leads here, our leading protagonist and our leading uh, antagonist, both going through similar 
situations as they both are kind of contemplating their mortality. More so with Butcher, who has been given a date, uh, so to speak, you know, a, a, a time frame in which he will be alive. And Homelander, who is kind of confronted with this midlife crisis, you know, finding uh, gray hairs on his in his pubic area and, <laughs> you know, being faced with mortality. And he's going through this crisis and. The performance by Anthony Starr throughout these four seasons has been stellar. The fact that he hasn't walked away with an Emmy for his portrayal as Homelander is a crime. It is an outright sin that this man has not walked away with a best performance by an actor in a television series. It is ridiculous. I don't even know if he's been nominated. I think he did once, but the dude has been doing God's work as Homelander. An amazing performance. A Superman with a ego complex and don't care who gives zero Fs. Man, and he plays it perfectly. And especially when you link it up with the current state of this country. And our political figures who have similarities to him, i.e. Trump. <laughs> if you, In case you thought I was going to dance around it, no, I'm not. It, he is Trump with superpowers, but you can still strip it away with the power thing. Too much power is too much power. You know, he, that is too much power for one man to have. And he has it. And he showed it in this first episode when the other seven hit the other uh group you know with the deep uh a train black noir two because uh, he killed the first one uh all, all of them gathered around the table and they're basically a bunch of yes men and up to the point where this was frustrating her uh homelander <laughs> when he tells the deep to go perform fellatio on a train and he actually was going to do it until Homelander stopped. And it was just to prove a point. You would do anything I tell you. None of you have the the huspa to challenge me. And it's driving me crazy. And nobody would challenge him until he stumbles upon uh, uh, another soup who is willing to challenge him. And he goes and recruit her. And that is uh, Sister Sage. And this is a new character for this season uh, and probably the biggest threat to the boys since uh, since the beginning. A bigger threat than Homelander because she is the smartest person in the world. They keep calling her the smartest woman in the world, but she corrects everybody who says that she's the smartest person in the world. And she is. And I never thought a brain, somebody's brain can be so threatening in the way that this character is written the way that this character is portrayed by susan hadward is amazing is amazing and is menacing without her being menacing she's not menacing she's just smart and she's smarter than everybody <laughs> including homelander and home and and that draws respect from homelander because she doesn't back down from him. everybody else does. Everybody else is intimidated by him. She's not. And she's smarter than him, and he knows it. And she would tell him <laughs> that she is. But he has to accept it because he needs her. He needs her. But I love this character, man, because it is a, a character that is going to be a thorn in our hero's side this season because she doesn't have superpowers to the... You know, to the extent of super strength, super speed, laser vision, or, uh, uh, you know, things of that nature. It's just her brain. And that's worse. Because you can outrun somebody that's stronger than you. You might can outsmart somebody that's faster than you. You know, but how are you, how are you going to outsmart somebody who's smarter than you? You know, who knows your next move? Who knows your next seven moves? <laughs> so it, it's hard. And it... They did a good job with how this character is presented to us 
but like every other character or any character or any person there's a flaw they all all characters have flaws and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out how it's laid out for us as the season goes along the character of butcher is dealing with this uh, uh you know <laughs> reality that he's gonna die uh he's gonna die in in a few months and the reality of all the stuff he did in life and he's he's contemplating on what he has done in life what what legacy is he leaving behind if any you know and he knows that he done he has done nothing right in his life and the one thing he wants to get right is to save the life of ryan who is homelander's son and coincidentally his wife's son as well after a sexual assault from homelander on uh butcher's wife if you watch the show you know that uh, but he he wants to save ryan from becoming his father and he wants to do that before he died that's the one thing he wants to do that's the one thing that he's driven to do before he leaves this earth and i am feeling that wholeheartedly in this first three episodes here because we know that this is going to be his driving force this season before he dies uh, this is not to find a cure or nothing like that. This miracle cure, none of that, which probably is going to pop up. Who knows? You know, <laughs> but as it stands right now, that's not his focus. He's come to grips with it, even though he, he's scared of it. He he op- he later admits that in episode three to Ryan that he is scared. He is truly scared of dying, um, even though he acts like he's not. And uh, it, it's. It's going to be a journey, an emotional journey, I feel. Uh, So get ready for that. (laughs) Get ready for that this season of The Boys. One of the other many subplots that has caught my interest this season, we have the dilemma (laughs) that poor Frenchie is going through here. Poor little Frenchie is in love with with this gentleman who... We later found out that Frenchie is the one who murdered his family. And the guy, I think his name is Colin, he, he's not aware of that. He's not aware of that, and he, he's constantly trying to get close to Frenchie. But Frenchie, ain't, you know, he's pushing him away because of the guilt. <laughs> the guilt that he killed not just one or two members of his family, his entire family. He's responsible for making Colin an orphan to, to driving him to the point where he became a drug addict. And that's where they were reintroduced at this, uh, rehab facility where Frenchie went to uh, get off of his, uh, uh, addiction and he ran into Colin and it, it was like karma, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and one thing led to another boom, they fell in love with each other. And it's like, man it, it, it's it's gonna be brutal it and now he it's it's eating him up literally eating him up from the inside to the point that he has gotten back on drugs and it he is killing himself because of the guilt of being with this person not just being uh uh, uh being around him after you've murdered his entire family years ago uh, but the fact that you're actually in love with him uh, that is brutal, man, because that's not going to end well. My bad is not going to cut it in that conversation. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And so uh, you have that subplot. You have the subplot with the new character, Firecracker, who is this kind of a, a right-wing, I guess you could say Alex Jones, female super-powered version of uh, <laughs> of that person. Uh, uh firecracker has a deep rooted hatred for starlight and has been preaching this propaganda against her and everything that uh starlight stands for she is tearing down on her little uh video vox or or whatever the case may be whenever she gets an opportunity to discuss it and we find out later that starlight when they were younger and 
in these beauty pageants and whatnot, or whatever the case may be, uh, Starlight started a rumor about a firecracker that ruined her, that completely ruined her. You know, that uh, she was sleeping with the judges or something to that effect that caused her to leave the pageant circuit and whatnot. And, you know, uh, uh, Starlight is trying to be, you know, apologetic about it, you know, that she's not that person anymore. She was young and she was under the influence of her mother and this, that, and the third. But Firecracker, understandably, don't want to hear that. <laughs> she don't want to hear that, you know. It, it's too late. It's too late. My life is ruined now. And so there's that. Then you have the A-Train uh, debacle where he is a double agent, I guess you could say, uh, feeding information to the boys. But there's another conflict there. Because let's not forget, it was A-Train who killed uh, Huey's girlfriend in the very first episode, probably the first five minutes of the show. Uh, accidentally, he didn't mean to kill her, but he killed her. And it was no remorse, and that was the whole issue. And so you have that. Uh, it, look, it, it is a lot going on this season so far, but not in typical boys' faction, uh, fashion. There's always a lot going on. But they find a way to carve out the perfect amount of time for every story, every subplot going on in a season, and for it all to come to a crescendo by the end everything gets tied up for the most part of course there's that continuing through line that has been going on since the very first episode in you know the very first season and so there's that but i mean as far as the other kind of uh branches that break off from it storyline wise really good job uh so far really got my interest uh you would think with this show taking such a long hiatus, but it's always a little hiatus between uh, seasons when it comes to the boys. And as of late, television period, not just the boys. It, it's, it's always been a gap there. It isn't one year. It's like two, three years. But I can accept it if you take two or three years and get the story right and get us right back on this train like we never hopped off it in the first place. I am enjoying the boys season four so far. I'm, I'm excited for what we have coming down the pike this season with this show. Like I said, so many different uh, storylines. I, I didn't even touch in on the deep and his uh, kind of emotional cycle that he's going through. <laughs> you know, the, uh, oh, what's the CEO? I forgot her name. Ashley. Ashley uh, being quote unquote belittled by uh by uh homelander in the seven to where she has to take a back seat now everybody's standing up to her now she's contemplating quitting vault and all this here there's a lot going on but not too much it's not too much i'm excited super excited if you can't tell but i would love to know how are you feeling about the boys season four so far are you excited for what's next or what's what's to come uh, let's not forget, we still have uh, uh, Gen V. Uh, I think season two is coming soon. Uh, that's linked up with this show as well. And will those uh, will season one of Gen V play a part into this season of the boys? That'll be interesting to see because we left with some really interesting stuff actually in the first season of Gen V. So this is gonna be interesting. But we shall see. But I would love to know, how are you feeling these first three episodes of The Boys of Season 4? You can email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also look up the show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. Don't forget to subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube. And like this video, if you don't mind. Also, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget about the five stars, the sharing this show on all of your social media platforms if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the kb radio network everybody thank you for joining me for this review recap if you will it wasn't so much of a review but it was more of a recap 
of the first three episodes of season four of The Boys, which is currently on Prime Video. New episodes drop every Wednesday on Prime, week to week. So we should be good for the rest of the summer on Wednesdays, at least. But uh, everybody, I want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love everyone. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.